History tells us the sad story of how the church divided over the correct mode of baptism. Some have sprinkled, others have poured, and then there are those who immerse. Well, a listener in Santa Ana, California, said she heard a minister say that Christ, our high priest, was sprinkled by John the Baptist because it followed the pattern given to the priests in the Old Testament. She then asks, how is this possible when Mark 1 says, coming up from the water? I have also thought that we were buried in baptism with Christ and that our coming up out of the water symbolized his resurrection. I I say to you that I'm sure that the passage of Scripture that says we are raised with him and buried with him in baptism, I think in the epistle to the Romans, actually refers to identification with Christ in his death and raised in resurrection and we are buried with him and we are raised with him and we are now joined to a living Christ. Now water baptism by immersion to me sets forth that symbolism in the church better than any other mode that I know anything about, better than sprinkling or that. And yet I was brought up in the Presbyterian church and I sprinkled a great many folk but I immersed a great many more people than I ever sprinkled. I let people make their own choice in this matter, and I think it should be a personal matter, uh, however a person feels that they should be baptized is the way that they should do it for their own satisfaction and their own peace of mind. And it should not constantly be made a subject of controversy, especially to try to attach any merit to it in salvation. And I know that my immersionist friends in the Baptist church say that it has no meaning whatsoever as far as salvation is concerned. That is, baptism does not save you and it has no saving quality, but it certainly sets forth our salvation. It's a testimony, by the way, and I think immersion does that better way, but I don't want to debate with you about it. And then to answer this, and it'd be very easy to answer all of this man's questions about the idea of sprinkling, the symbolism that was used in anointing the priest in the Old Testament has relationship to the Lord Jesus, but has no relationship to us whatsoever. And our great high priest was set aside for that office not after the office of the Aaronic priesthood to begin with, but that which is of Melchizedek, which has no beginning or ending. That is the thing that we should keep in mind, that you can't stretch that symbolism over and make it mean something that you just want it to mean. And then the argument that, well, it was winter time. Well, I do not know whether this man realizes it. I've been to the place a traditional spot where John the Baptist baptized and also baptized the Lord Jesus Christ. I did not baptize anyone there. I won't do it because I'm so afraid people will attach some merit to it, but I always get some preacher on our tour, and I did last time, and he was a Presbyterian preacher, and he immersed several people who wanted to be immersed in the Jordan River, and it's perfectly all right if you feel you'd like to have that done, but I'm always afraid people will attach merit to that. But in that place, there are a great many springs. Sure, in wintertime it would be cold there, but there happens to be a great many hot water springs there. They're all over the place. And so if you're looking for warm water for baptism in wintertime, you could find it there. So that would be no objection to immersion at all. So my feeling is that these are objections this man is right. But the controversy goes on, and I see no reason for it in this day. Why not let's get the Word of God out today and get people to the Lord Jesus Christ? And then a mode of baptism is something that you can talk about later. But let's get the gospel to them today. That's the important thing. 